What's going on? How are you guys this week? Another Monday down at Frankie's Free Range Meat. And if you guys are ever buying a business or a property or anything, definitely don't do it across the street from a mechanic because I don't think there's been one day where I've come down here and I've had my loading dock or my driveway open. But um, that's just more nonsense on top of the nonsense. In good news, the dehydrator is finally here. I think we're in over $10,000 to get this godforsaken machine in here. And the machine was around 5000 It cost 2500 to get here. So that's 7500 And then just to get it off the truck and into the warehouse, it cost me, I think, over another 1000 because it was 650 for the forklift rental. I had to give the guy 300 to use the forklift, which is a whole story I'll tell. And then my insurance company charged me 350 to insure the forklift for that one day. And then I had to pay an electrician $2,000 to wire this. So $10,000 is an incredible amount of money. However, most machines this size are usually uh, 15 to 20,000 in the United States without installation and delivery. So you know, we still saved quite a bit of money. That's the, that's the electrical work going up. It's still not operational yet. Uh, the electrician's gonna come tomorrow or Wednesday and do the rest and I'm gonna give him the rest of his money. I don't know, this seems like some janky Chinese shit, doesn't it guys? This is like, it's like a screw. Is this grade A Chinaman mechanical work? So it's really deep back there. Uh, it's, it's, two, it's two trays wide. I'm a little worried that the perforations in these trays are not adequate for uh, meat, but uh, maybe we'll have to buy like, I don't know, a lot of sheet racks that fit these slots, which shouldn't be that big of a deal. All right, I don't know, that thing's a pain in the ass to use. Uh, so it's, the machine's not in too bad of a shape. However, it did come with like rust and corrosion on uh, this motor part, and there was also some rust on the top side. So whatever these Chinese pricks were doing, they did not use new stuff. It's like my electrician closed this up. We don't really have to look in there. It's just an electrical panel that he had to completely rewire. Uh, so this is the controls, which again, it's not operational. But as you guys can see, this is really, really big. I think it's around nine feet tall and nine feet wide. And it did not fit in the warehouse. It was maybe, you know, five inches too tall, but we had it on the dollies because this thing is like 1500 pounds. So there's no way for us to take it off the dollies and everything and push it into the warehouse and then use it in there. It would have been basically impossible. So we had to leave it out here and set it up out here. I should have got one that was one size smaller and it would have been a whole lot easier ordeal. This just happened to be, you know, barely big enough to not fit inside. We don't really have room inside anywhere. Uh, so when this was supposed to be delivered, I asked them if they could get it in the warehouse without a forklift and I didn't trust them. Uh, so I did get a forklift rental. So forklift rental guy shows up while the dehydrator delivery is waiting here. And the guy was like, you got a forklift driver? And I was like, no, I'll figure it out. Cause I genuinely thought, you know, driving a forklift isn't too difficult. You have the forward back lever on the right, but then, you know, the delivery driver for the dehydrator, wasn't able to back it up to our loading dock. So thankfully the guy that delivered the forklift was a driver. He said he'll help me out. He had some straps on him. I, I gave the guy $300 for, for getting that off the truck. And uh, what's going on out here? Just more assholes honking their horn every day. Go figure. Yeah, the problem with this mechanic across the street is they always block the street completely and then people get irritated and start like slamming their horns when they can go around the street. But yeah, people are crazy. People are completely crazy. One time, uh, this bus driver pulled onto the street while I was pulling out and there were cars on both sides of the road double parked so I couldn't get out. And the bus driver didn't want to back up off the street. Like she would have had to back up like maybe 10 feet. I would have had to back up 50 feet. And she was having such a conniption I got out of my car and left it parked there for 10 minutes and the stubborn ass bus driver still didn't move, which to me, these people are nuts down here, man. I'm just trying not to get shot or stabbed at this point. Um, but back to the delivery, thankfully the guy knew how to drive a forklift. We were able to get the dehydrator off the truck pretty easily using two pallet jacks and the lift gate and the forklift. And then the guy, you know, 
drove it over to the other side of the street and then put it on this loading dock here. And then we just, you know, maneuvered it into the corner over here and that's where it's gonna stay for now. So hopefully we get some jerky going soon. It's just, this is gonna be uh, a, a bit tricky to figure out. Uh, the main thing I'm concerned about right now is having to buy new drying trays. I think what's gonna be pretty easy to do is just see, you know, granted this works is you know, the drying temperature and drying time and what we're going to use. Um, we still have a decent amount of space in here if there's no garbage. So we have, you know, two pallets ready to go with meat shipments. There's some garbage over here. There's another pallet with uh, the post office pickup. And then I could put those in the corner over there. And although I'm, I think I'm just going to put these on the street for now. And if someone steals them, I don't give a shit because I'm sick of people parking in front. So the guys already packed up every order that was placed before the weekend. Now they're in the freezer uh, doing the Saturday, Sunday ones. And this is the first week I haven't really done any orders in the freezer and I haven't really been keeping too uh, tight of an eye on the inventory. I kind of like it as an experiment to see, you know, if I have to go up and operate that slaughterhouse, how this uh, runs on its own. And things are looking pretty good so far. Uh, you know, we're going to hop in the freezer today and instead of like looking at what products are new, we're just going to kind of see uh, what's going on, what's out of stock and what we have. I do have to do like 10 foods orders. I have a couple orders for Frankie's Naturals Organ Supplements, but I kind of fell behind. I ran out of one of the products for uh, organ supplements and there's like 15 orders waiting on the vitamin D. So I got to try to get some of that done and, uh, and get those orders out today because some people have been waiting since like Wednesday of last week. Water kefir is available on the website. Uh, this is second ferment water kefir. So I ship this out now two or three days it'll be completely done and have an optimal bacterial content there's only like 12 of these available per every few days right now so definitely hop on it if you guys want to try the water kefir that's made already best bars of course in stock we got all the the lard the tallow the pork lard wagyu tallow regular beef tallow and lamb tallow we have the whey protein in stock and we have the bolivian rose salt as well as the peruvian pink salt so frankie strange meat i'm trying to get some stuff in foods, everything's kind of in stock. We're still waiting on the new glucose supplement to come in. For Wi-Fi shielding, the bed canopies actually came in before the fabric, so I'm still waiting on the fabric, unfortunately. It got held in customs for some reason. Loan on the slaughterhouse, I gotta submit some more documents today. This is taking a lot longer than I thought. And uh, I mean, let me get these orders packed and filled because it's already 1.15. Uh, I, I woke up a little late today because I went to bed at like 6 a.m. And then, um, I don't know if you guys in New York ever take the Hutch Parkway, there's a, a drawbridge on it. And sometimes they lift the drawbridge up, you're stuck on there for like 40 minutes, which is what happened today. So I got down here really late. Um, that's fine, we'll get everything done today. Probably have to go home, take a nap. And since we do have that uh, dehydrator, I'm excited to see uh, you know, if we can do the jerky. Uh, I don't think we're gonna be able to do the pemmican, but maybe. And I definitely won't have to eat this uh, crappy Whole Foods jerky anymore, that's for sure. So I did a couple hours of work downstairs. It's getting close to three o'clock and I don't want to sit in my car for another two hours, so I better get out of the city now. Uh, I foolishly put on a t-shirt and shorts this morning, so we're gonna do some hot cold therapy in the freezer for a few minutes. So there's nothing really new. I think I showed you guys the, the prime rib roast that came in uh, the other week. We have the bone-in prime rib back in stock. Plenty of sirloin steaks, tenderloin, uh, we have the new 11 steak sampler, so if you're interested in seeing what 11 steaks you're getting, go to the website frankiestrangemeat.com, check it out. Still have a, a small amount of the Wagyu steaks left, which have beautiful marbling. Uh, the petite tenderloin is coming a little larger now. It's about a three pound package. We've worked through most of that uh, free ground beef promo. I think we'll end it this week. Uh, still way too much lamb and goat organs if you guys want to jump on those. I might lower the price even more, although I think it's already very cheap. And I'm trying to get the beef organs back in stock. We're kind of uh, we're kind of out of a lot of the beef heart and beef liver. Pork is still going. Uh, way too much cod liver oil, actually. We got the uh, the new labels on the cod liver oil that are waterproof, so shouldn't have any issues there. I mean, the main thing this week was you know showing you guys. I did get the dehydrator in. I'm hoping to have some type of jerky recipe sorted out by the end of this week, and maybe we can do the first batch next week. Maybe, maybe not. I still don't have any type of uh, container to put the jerky in, which I, I mean, that's not that big of a deal. I can find something, but you know, I'm trying to work towards containers for everything that are 
like not plastic that don't leach any negative chemicals into the food which is is very difficult from a cost and sourcing perspective and speaking of that a lot of you guys ask frank why do i use styrofoam it's because if i ship someone meat and it goes bad because it wasn't in styrofoam then that's not very eco-friendly i'd rather use a styrofoam container than lose two three four hundred dollars worth of meat because someone wanted something eco-friendly that doesn't keep the product as cold you know even if it's just you know safety measures like like the styrofoam keeps the product cold for a day or two longer than all of the other options out there so yeah it's not eco-friendly i know a lot of you guys don't like it but would you rather get spoiled meat if if you know the uts or the fedex holds it for a couple days but uh maybe i'll give you guys uh, an update on the slaughterhouse next week maybe update on the jerky hopefully you know we get uh, those other products and so i can launch some stuff uh, what did we do we did the water keeper the other week we got again that glucose product that i'm excited to do but i'm just pushing forward trying to uh, not lose my mind completely so i guess thank you guys for joining today uh, please drop a like on the video leave a comment down below let me know if there are any products you guys would like me to get and uh, subscribe so that youtube can unsubscribe you next week uh, so thanks again guys and i'll see you for tomorrow